Good evening. Welcome to Cleveland Heights High School, a place that we believe is the soul and the heart of our city, a place where many different fabrics are woven together to create a beautiful composition of talented and enriched individuals aspiring to be the leaders of our global world, a place where we have always committed to our past, to our present, and to our future, a place we believe you and us make the dream of our community and our schools come alive. This evening, we are honoring members of our senior class of 2015 who have achieved excellence in the diverse areas of their high school career. I want to welcome the community, families, sponsors, and donors as we showcase the outstanding efforts of our students here tonight. I commend the generosity of time and money that so many scholarship donors and supporters have given to our students. Students, so many of you have done extraordinary community services. Some of you have poured your hearts and souls into your creative writing entries. So many of you have achieved academically, and I could go on and on and on. However, Mrs. Bloxon told me not to do that. <laughs> Let me stop so that we can all sit back and relax and enjoy the achievement of our students. So, let's dive into our program by first asking our choir members to come up to the stage and lead us in our alma mater. You can clap. Go ahead and clap. Presentation. 
Because there are numerous awards to be made and because of the time limitation, we must request that all presenters be very brief, two to three minutes. To students and presenters, please use the stairs here to my right. At this time, I would like to introduce and ask to come to the podium our wonderful, hardworking, and student-centered superintendent, Dr. Talisa Dixon, who will present the, the Scholastic Recognition Awards. Would um, Shani Gillis, Benjamin Galuli, Abraham Mendez, David Pecorero, Thomas Ferris, Isaiah Pressman, and Ann Zakari please come to the stage? So I was still very distant about Abraham. 
So 16,000 semifinalists are the highest scores in each of the 50 states and represent less than 1% of each state's high school seniors. Abraham um, was received that um, um, recognition and then in February, all the students um, met the rigorous requirements for finalists in this year's National Merit Scholarship programs were announced. So that's wonderful that Abraham received that recognition. So we have Thomas and Isaiah. We're not here, but Thomas and Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah, step four. Is that worth good? Good. And Thomas Ferris, thank you. I'm sorry. Thomas Ferris and Isaiah Pressman, you advanced to the national finalist status. Congratulations. And this distinction places you in a group representing fewer than half of, uh, of the one PSAT test. So Thomas and Isaiah would be considered for the National Merit Scholarships to be offered this year. National Merit Scholarship winners of 2015 would be announced in four nationwide um, news releases beginning in April and concluding in July. And these scholarship recipients are, um, again, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, step forward, please. Thomas has been named. Smile, Thomas. Thomas has been named and selected by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation to receive the prestigious National Merit Scholarship of $2,500. Thomas joined. Okay. So Thomas joins more than 300,000 other distinguished young people who have earned the Merit Scholar title. So one of 300,000 students. So Thomas also received the Mason National Merit Scholarship Award from the University of Oklahoma. So all of your students represent our National Merit um, Scholarship Program. Congratulations to all of you. So we applaud you as you continue to pursue academic success. So Thomas, you please remain on the stage and the other achievers So you can come a little closer, Thomas. Okay. <laughs> so, um, United States Presidential Scholar nominee, Thomas Ferris. So, the United States Presidential Scholarship Program was established in 1964 by the executive order of the president to recognize some of our nation's most distinguished graduating high school seniors. Students are selected on the basis of the basis of broad academic achievement personal characteristics, leadership, service activities, and their exceptional high ACT or, S or SAT score in a single test administration. Each year, approximately 3,900 candidates are identified. Thomas Ferris has been named, select has been named selected as a candidate in this distinguished program. Thomas has excelled academically during his four years as a Heights High student. He earned a perfect score of five on both the Calculus AB and Calculus BC exam. <laughs> During this year in the um, post-secondary option program, he enjoyed taking a total of six mathematics courses and three physics courses. At the University of Oklahoma, he plans to pursue a bachelor's of science degrees in both mathematics and physics, while also studying a broad range, a broad range of other sciences. He would then move on to graduate studies in math or physics. His ultimate goal is to contribute to the scientific research with the hope that, he, um, that his discovery would benefit many people. Thomas, you have outstanding your teachers with your amazing analytic problem-solving skills while willingly, help your, willingly helping your fellow students with a sincere, humble heart. Congratulations, and we're also very proud of you. So our next scholarship is Phi Beta Kappa. So would Sarah Lentz please join me on stage? So let's get Sarah around the applause.
The Phi Beta Kappa Society was founded in 1776 to honor the scholarship and intellectual achievement of students of the arts and sciences in our colleges and universities. The Cleveland Association of Phi Beta Kappa was chartered in 1947. Since its inception, it has sought to recognize scholastic excellence as exemplified by outstanding high school students throughout the Cleveland area. Each year, the Cleveland Association, in cooperation with public and private high schools of this area, honor the individual student in each high school who has been nominated by his or her school as being worthy of recognition. The honored student is one who demonstrates the qualities of academic honesty, inquiry and scholarly manners, matters, which goes beyond assignments and requirements a creative involvement in scholarship with great interest in things of the mind. The student is selected from a group of students who are in the top 10% of the class in achievement. Through this award system, the association hopes to honor the individual student, but also to stimulate the idea of high academic achievement among all high school students in Northern Ohio. Our Phi Beta Kappa honoree this year is Sarah, and one of Sarah teachers writes that Sarah possesses a sense of discipline and work ethic that believes her youth. That her youth. She has earned scores of five on both exams of AP U.S. Government, Politics, and Comparative Politics and Government. Five is the highest score. While Sarah is one of many students who have, heard, who have earned high scores, she is the only one who wrote to her teacher over the summer thanking her for helping her reach that achievement. <laughs> Very thoughtful. Another teacher writes that Sarah could easily work hard uh, to memorize difficult content, but it's her analytical skills and ability to deconstruct arguments that sets her apart. He said she keeps him on she kept him kept him on his toes with insightful questions. She's more concerned with gaining a deeper understanding of the material she is studying and learning. She wants to know why. Sarah excels in athletics as well as academics, and she is the number one senior with a 4.6531 GPA. recognition and honors they brought to our district. Additionally, as we enter the local and departmental awards part of the program, I want to thank the community for your support of our student body. So we will now begin our local scholarship program um, with Mr. James Reed. So Mr. Reed, if you would come forward, please. Thank you. Good evening. I am uh, James Reed and I am here to present the John Lewis Award. John Lewis was just beginning to come into his own when he graduated from Cleveland Heights High School in 1952. He planned to attend Cornell University in the fall, but John was never able to realize his full potential because he was killed in a car accident that summer just eight days before his 17th birthday. This award, established in his memory by his family, seeks to find a student like John, who was just beginning to know himself or herself and to help him or herself realize their potential. 
The Lewis family would like students to remember that this can happen to anyone and that it is so important to be safe when you are behind the wheel. Safe not only means not drinking or doing drugs, but realize that texting, talking on the phone, or just not paying attention to the road and the cars around you is detrimental to your safety. This award is based on a student who has exhibited integrity, industry, and talent in his or her chosen area of endeavor, whether it is scholastic achievement or the work that they do after school, or it can be just staying even when faced with a bad situation. This school year, the John Lewis recipient is Emily Vincent. responsibility and excels at both. I can honestly state without hesitation that every time I have asked her to assume a leadership position, she has taken the task enthusiastically and made it her own. She has recruited and led others for all of the years that she has been a student at Cleveland Heights High School. She has led others, not just in our halls, our classrooms, or on our athletic field, but in the community as well. The Lewis family stated that Emily exemplifies what every student at Cleveland Heights High School should look like in the future. Emily, congratulations. Sack. He's about a foot and a half taller than me, so I'm never confused for him. I'm Eric Silverman, and I'm filling in for Mark, whose son has a lacrosse competition this evening. Um, if I could have Omotaya Agaja, Nicholas Cicero, Queen Galladay, Jasmine Shaw, Emily Vinson, and Caitlin Waldman come to the stage. My apologies, this is uh, Mr. Sack's comments, so uh, hopefully I'll do them justice. Um, Holocaust-related education began at Cleveland Heights High School in the mid-1970s. For the past 40 years, thousands of students have not only learned historical facts about this, historic, this horrific period, students have also been exposed to thought-provoking conversations about the dangers of prejudice, discrimination, and hate. Over the years, students have had meaningful experiences in such faraway places as Poland and Israel, as well as the United States Holocaust Museum in Washington and the African American History and Holocaust Museums in Detroit. Our Holocaust class students have had opportunities to help others in community service projects and engage in conversations about racism in America with students from all over Greater Cleveland. The main goal of Holocaust studies and the outside of, in, in, the, in the outside of the classroom experiences is to focus on helping our students become more thoughtful and tolerant people who not only don't engage in insensitive behavior towards others, but also people who will speak up and take action against prejudice and discrimination. In, this, in some small way, it is hoped that lessons of the Holocaust studies will contribute to making high tie in our community better places. In the fall of 2014, the Holocaust Education Fund within the Cleveland Heights High School Alumni Foundation received a grant from the, the Traub Family Foundation administered by the Jewish Community Federation of Cleveland. These funds are being utilized for special field trip experiences and for two newly established scholarships for outstanding seniors, lessons, senior lessons of the Holocaust students. The first scholarship is in honor of Gita Frankel. Mrs. Frankel is a Holocaust survivor who has dedicated herself to helping educate students about the dangers of intolerance and hate. 
The impact of her conversations with our students is immeasurable. All of her presentations with Height students and the mutual admiration and lots of hugs. The second scholarship is in honor of Dr. Leatrice Rabinsky, a former Heights High teacher who, star who started Holocaust-related education here at Heights in 1974 and has become an internationally renowned educator in this field. Dr. Rabinsky has influenced the lives of tens of thousands of students of all ages, and we are fortunate to have had her as a teacher and mentor here at Heights High. In reviewing all the outstanding application applications for, this, for these scholarships for this, for this first year of their existence, the committee has determined that instead of awarding two scholarships, it will award six students with the following recognition. Outstanding studies of outstanding students of Holocaust studies at Cleveland Heights High School as, and as future agents of tolerance and community building. The committee commends them for their past accomplishments, wishes them all the best in their future endeavors, and wants them to remember that what they do matters. Congratulations, I Good evening. My name is Tawny Ratner, and I'm representing Albert Ratner, who is away in New York, uh, helping his granddaughter get married this weekend. So uh, I know he'd love to be here, but he can't be here, so you get me. Um, with the students Miranda Coble, Kristen Gustafson, and Emily Benson, please come to the stage. I knew Faye Katz Ratner for only one year before her death in 1978, but in that short time, she taught me a lot about kindness, graciousness, and generosity. I cherish the memory of her teaching me to bake hala. After Faye passed, I heard many stories of ways in which she helped people change the trajectory of their lives in significant ways. She was an intuitive listener and a compassionate, motivating friend. Her husband, Albert, was a class two years ahead of her here at Heights High. She was the um, senior class treasurer for her year as senior. They met at an after-school volunteer meeting for the Jewish Welfare Federation. They both attended college. Albert graduated from Michigan State, and Faye graduated from Flora Mather College, a women's college at Case Western Reserve. Faye went on to become a mother, an active community volunteer, and a school psychologist in the Cleveland Metro School District, where she worked with children in the Head Start program. Stories about Faye are legendary. She left a legacy through her work with the children she helped and the impact of her caring to a wide community of families. She was an excellent mother and an excellent cook. She set very high standards for herself while being thoughtful and forgiving of others. The qualities that Faye exemplified were compassion, kindness, generosity, and a love of all people. This is what made Faye Katz Ratner so loved during her life and so remembered to this day. The young women who were interviewed for this award inspire these qualities as well. From this group of women, we selected two winners and a finalist. It is with great pleasure that I announce the winners, Miranda Coble. Please step forward. Kristen Gustafson and Emily Benson.
Good evening. Would Miriam Ali please come join me on the stage? My name is Judy Yurum, and I'm here to present the Sharon Marsha Tenenbaum Scholarship Award to Miriam. The friends, the family, and the congregation of Temple Emmanuel established the scholarship in memory of Sharon Marsha Tenenbaum, who was a 1959 graduate of Cleveland Heights High School. But three days prior to her graduation from college, Sharon was taken from her parents and from the world by a fatal illness. Each year, Temple Emanuel presents this award to a worthy Cleveland Heights High School graduate who's going to be attending a state or publicly supported Ohio school. Someone for whom financing of college represents a hardship and for whom the scholarship makes a significant difference in his or her ability to pursue a higher education. This year's recipient is Miriam Ali. <laughs> Miriam has faced some unspeakable events in her life that could have damaged her views of trusting. However, she chose to be courageous and kind and hardworking. She focused on giving back to others, especially to little children. She has volunteered as a babysitter in her grandmother's daycare since she was seven years old. For the past two summers, Miriam has participated in the Cleveland Clinic's N-E-O-R-M-E-A internship program to further her studies in science and medicine. Miriam plans to be a pediatric physician assistant, and she plans to study science and medicine at Kent State University this fall. Miriam, continue to be yourself, to be strong and sensitive and intelligent, and we know that you will succeed in all you do. Congratulations. My name is Lita Gonzalez. I'm co-chair of the Officer Jason West Memorial Scholarship Committee. Here with me tonight is Cleveland Heights Police Officer Sean Hinkle and Officer Jason West's um, sister, Annie Rayhart. His mother, Georgine West, is in the audience. On May 26, 2007, Officer West responded to a disturbance call. He was first to arrive and tragically lost his life. That night, while protecting the citizens of Cleveland Heights, he made the ultimate sacrifice, and this city lost not just a dedicated police officer, but also a very dear friend. To many who knew him, Officer West is a hero, not because of the way he died, but because of the way he chose to live his life as a devoted son and brother, loyal friend, and as a mentor and role model to young adults in the community. And most of all, as a dedicated police officer, something he had always wanted to be. The residents and businesses in Cleveland Heights, together with his family, friends, and fellow officers, came together in 2008 to establish the Officer Jason West Memorial Scholarship Fund. It is a two-part scholarship. The first part is awarded to a graduating senior from the law enforcement criminal justice program who plans on pursuing a career in law enforcement or criminal justice and who exemplifies Officer West's dedication to and work as a, a police officer. The second part of the scholarship is presented to the recipient after he or she successfully completes their first year in college. 
I'd like to call um, Kelly Howard, Anna um, Jersek, and Cameron Steele to the audience, please, uh, to the stage, please. I'm very proud that Cameron was able to be here tonight. He graduated last year, just finished his first year in college, and he'll get the second half of his award tonight. Michael Kowalski, who last year's recipient, also finished his first year, but he could not be here tonight. Camille Harris, who was our 2011 award recipient, just graduated from Wright State University with a 4.0 GPA. And she's going to um, Minnesota uh, for graduate school, completely paid for by the university. <laughs> also in the audience is our 2012 recipient, Stedman Smith, uh, who's back from uh, his tour uh, in the Army, and uh, we welcome him back. This year's. This year's class did not make it easy for the scholarship committee. 11 outstanding students submitted applications. All 11 students had passed the Ohio Peace Officers Training Academy certification test, meaning that they were certified by the Ohio Attorney General as new private security officers. In the end, the committee decided to award two scholarships to Anna Ajersek and Kelly Howard. Like Officer West, Kelly Howard exhibits important qualities, professionalism, empathy and respect for others, integrity, honesty, and the desire to keep our legal system fair and just. He is captain of the wrestling team, is part of a mentoring program at Heights High that mentors freshman students, and will soon attain his Eagle Scout ranking. Because of the leadership he has shown in the classroom, Kelly was recently selected as one of 11 African-American male students chosen to represent Cleveland Heights as part of the Promises Kept Project, a collaborative project with Cleveland Heights, Shaker Heights, and the Cleveland Municipal School District. He participated in the project's leadership working, the workshops. Adhering to the expected professionalism, uh, professional standards in the field of law enforcement is important to Kelly because as he puts it, we set the example of what is expected of citizens in the community. In his essay, Kelly wrote, success isn't just about what you accomplish in life, it's about what you inspire others to do. He will begin his future in the field of criminal justice and law enforcement at Central State University in the fall. When she was young, Anna Majersek saw the movie To Kill a Mockingbird. It changed her mind about being a veterinarian and fueled a desire to follow in the footsteps of Atticus Finch and become a lawyer. She even became active in the debate club to further her debating skills. That desire has evolved, and Anna now hopes to become a US Marshal and eventually to take a position as a field agent for the FBI. Anna has been president of her criminal justice class for two years. She volunteers for the Children's Hunger Alliance. She is a detail-oriented young woman with a strong work ethic who works well with diverse groups of people and always seems to have a smile on her face. Those who know Anna say, say that she stands out in the classroom for her eagerness to learn, to help and encourage others. She will be graduating with a cumulative GPA of 3.4 and has been accepted to Ohio University, Colorado State, and the University of Colorado. And I know they'll all be back here next year to get the second half of their scholarship.
Good evening. My name is Barbara Burgess Van Aken, and I am here to present the 2015 Robert L. Foltz Community Service Award to Devin Holsey and Imani Smith. Would they please come forward? Well, Devin and Imani make their way to the stage. Let me explain that this award was established to honor the memory of my late husband, Robert L. Soltz. He was an activist in the Heinz community, and he uh, was uh, on the University Heights, uh, Cleveland Heights University Heights School Board in the late 80s and the early 90s. Bob believed that all of us, regardless of our talents, can and should give back to our communities. Um, the 23 candidates who uh, sought this year's award apparently agree with my husband, uh, and the selection committee was very impressed with the diversity of their community contributions. Imani and Devin, however, stood out in some very important ways. In the essays that they wrote as part of the application process for this award, Devin and Imani wowed the selection committee with their breadth of service, with their passion for helping others, and with their vision for making the world a better place. Make no mistake, these two young students are lifelong givers. They have taken multiple mission trips, they volunteered for local organizations such as the Site Center, MedWish, the Shaker Nature Center, the Cleveland Food Bank, and the American Red Cross that goes on and on. They tutor after school and support school-sponsored services such as um, Project Build. Outside of school, they are active in their churches and their neighborhoods. <coughs> Excuse me. For Devin and for Imani, uh, community service is written into their DNA, and I think they probably engage in it as often as they breathe. I love that Imani wrote in her essay, I wouldn't stop serving, serving people for anything in the world. Similarly, Devin wrote, volunteering is ultimately about helping others and having an impact on people's well-being. What better way is there to connect with your community and give back? Wise words, Devin. You know, it's easy to be self-absorbed in one senior year. Filling out all those college applications, making decisions about what to do after high school, and savoring all those last senior moments, it all puts the spotlight on you. And that's understandable because you are all about to go out to find your way in the world. But as each of you embarks on your journey of self-discovery, I encourage you to keep in mind my favorite quote, and I quote it every year here, um, by one of the world's greatest leaders, Mahatma Gandhi. He said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Imani and Devin, you have obviously learned Gandhi's lesson early in life, and I congratulate you. And I encourage the rest of you to help me congratulate them as well. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Lombardo. I'm proud to be the Director of Human Resources for Cleveland Heights University Heights Schools. And I'm here to present the Camera Education Scholarship. So will Sydney Bennett and Emily Vincent please come to the stage? Uh, the Cleveland Area Minority Educators Recruiting Association, that's what CAMRA stands for, is comprised of 20 school member districts 
whose mission is to identify, recruit, and support those teachers who are sensitive and responsive to student needs in a culturally diverse school environment. Uh, the scholarship is given to support graduated seniors who are pursuing a career in education. Uh, Cindy Bennett writes, since I was in third grade, I have wanted to be an elementary school teacher. It's always been something about being around kids that make me feel happy. I had a third grade teacher, Ms. Cohen, from Fairfax Elementary School. She is one of the causes is why I decided to become an elementary teacher. She also writes, recently I started a writing club at school called Literary Society. Here students have fun with their interests in creative writing and gaining great feedback on techniques to help them improve their craft. And Emily Vinson writes, after high school graduation, I'll be attending the Ohio State University, study early childhood education with a minor in leadership or public affairs. She wants to pursue her master's degree in administration. And after spending years as an elementary teacher, she wants to become a principal and then even a superintendent. And I did meet uh, Emily when she was touring with Dr. Dixon. Uh, she came into HR and she actually said, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So uh, uh, I congratulate both of them. And Camera is awarding five scholarships among the 20 schools. And I'm proud to say Cleveland Heights has two of those. And you're each getting a $1,500 scholarship. So congratulations. Good evening. Would Antoine Jones, Malik Taylor, and Prentice Wade please come up to the stage? My brother, Paul Appleton, who's listed in the program, um, could not be here. He's a Cleveland firefighter and was not able to get um, his ship covered. I'm Sherry Appleton. I'm a Heights grad, um, a semi-recent Heights parent, and I'm honored to be making this presentation of this award um, with Jeff Porter from the Auto Tech um, program here at Heights. The Samuel Appleton Auto Tech Scholarship Fund recognizes the accomplishments of a graduating senior in the auto tech program. Sam Appleton was an East Tech grad who was an Air Force mechanic during World War II and continued in the automotive industry during his professional career. It would have meant a lot to him to help young adults in the Heights Auto Tech program. Sam passed away in 1978 through um, this scholarship was established just this year in his memory by his wife and family through the Faye Kaplan Charitable Foundation. Faye, who is here tonight, was a 1943 Heights grad. My two brothers and I, um, and my husband, um, graduated from Heights in 1975, 1978, and 1980. Two of Faye's grandchildren um, graduated in 2009 and 2011. This scholarship is intended to help a graduating auto tech senior with further education or training or supplies to help establish themselves in their field. In reviewing the scholarship applications, the committee recognized more than one strong candidate who has taken responsibility for their education, um, reflected on their life experiences, and have met the very high expectations of Mr. Porter and the auto tech program. The committee decided to honor three graduating seniors. Uh, Sam Appleton would have been very proud to award these scholarships to Antoine Jones, Malik Taylor, 
and Prentice Ward. Wait, excuse me. <laughs> Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming, and thank you for the generosity of all the contributors, and congratulations to parents and students you rock, and you continue to strive on, okay, and reach your goals. Raven Lewis, please come to the stage. The Danielle Gibbs Scholarship is given to honor the life and memory of Danielle Gibbs. Her spirit and her smile were inspirational and a delight for all of us. The scholarship is given to a senior who has achieved academically as well as being involved in extracurricular activity. The student has an interest in special needs students. This year, the scholarship is awarded to Raven. Raven, come join. <laughs> Raven was selected for this scholarship because in overcoming obstacles in her life, um, one that impaired her vision. Um, Raven is actually classified as legally blind. And she came through our hallways without using the stick. OK, I don't know the right words to say for that, so I'll call it the step <laughs> and she overcame her obstacle by reaching out to help others. Raven has maintained a 3.63 taking course you know like she's taken Irish courses she's taken AP courses she's shown us that there's nothing that can stop you. She volunteers at the Cleveland Clinic Sight Center. She helps people to learn to read Braille. She teaches them how to overcome the fears because she's overcome fears. Um, Raven is planning on teaching, I mean not teaching, see there, there I go, teaching. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're going to the University of Akron. <laughs> Raven is going to the University of Akron to major in child and family development. And the reason why she wants to do that is because she's going to become a life specialist. Yes, a child life specialist. And one reason she's going to do that is because of the child life specialist that helped her to overcome her fears, influenced her so much that she has decided to give back to <coughs> others. And I just think it's amazing. <laughs> president of the group called Friends of Cane Park, and oh, I'm supposed to call up the recipients. Uh, will uh, Mason Spencer and Celia Vanden Bogert please join me? <laughs> sort of takes away the element of surprise when I announce their names later. But. So this is the Jesse Blake Friends of Cane Park Excellence in Visual and Performing Arts Award. Um, we do this award for several reasons. First of all, there are uh, strong connections between Cane Park and Heights High. 
Um, Cape Park was literally started single-handedly by a teacher at, at Heights High at the time, uh, Diana Reese Evans, for whom this auditorium is named, and the uh, main stage at Cane Park is named for the Evans Amphitheater. Um, she it was in the mid-30s, and she um, put on a play there, and right, it was just a ravine at the time. And uh, it, people came to see it, and they got this, she got this idea to have a, a whole park there, and that's what you see today down the road. Um, so we choose the recipients uh, by, uh, first of all, they are recommended by their art or music teachers. And then they write essays, which we actually read. And um, what we look for mainly is not just uh, what they've achieved already, but what they plan to do with their skills and their talents in the future. And um, this, is the, uh, this is the last time that I or any of us will be on this stage in this auditorium as it is now because um, it it's part of the, the big renovation that's going on. But when I was a student here, and actually student is too strong a word, when I was, uh, when I attended Heights High, <laughs> actually even that is kind of stretching it. When, when I was enrolled here, I spent uh, many hours, on, many times on this very stage, um, mostly doing music and um, that, that's, that's what I do. I mean, that's part of what I do still. Um, the uh, choir director at that time, Claire McElfresh, gave me many opportunities to uh, develop the talent that he saw in me. And uh, being in the Heights Choir, literally, I say this every year, but it's true, literally saved my life. I was on the wrong path. I was on a couple wrong paths maybe more than a couple. And um, it's the only reason I ever uh, set foot inside the building, really. I mean, I was not a student. I was gonna say I was not a good student, but I was not a student. Uh, but, um, you know, being on the fourth floor every day uh, just really uh, set me on a, a path. Fourth floor is the choir room, by the way. Um, and uh, so set me on a, a journey that I, uh, I'm still on right now handed me a career. And so, administrators and board members, um, please keep that in mind if you're ever thinking that music and art are expendable, because they're not. I mean, I think they're equally important, as important as math and science. Okay. And actually, there are, are many studies that show that, too. It's not just my opinion. So uh, many years later, after I left Heights High, I had the opportunity to contribute to continuing that tradition of possibly saving kids' lives by helping to restore the vocal music department to what it had been and what it is today. And the major part of that being the hiring of Craig McGaughy as the uh, vocal music director. And Mr. McGaughy is retiring at the end of the school year, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank him for the very hard work he has put into bringing the choir and the singers back to life and to prominence. And and I, um, I assume that the administration has already found a great replacement for him, or have at least begun the process. If not, I'd be glad to help in that regard. Again. So um, anyway, our two recipients of this year's Friends of Camp Park Excellence in the Visual and Performing Arts Award are both from the Instrumental Music Department, which of course is equally important, and they are Mason Spencer and Celia Vanden Bogert. And this, this is a monetary award, by the way. It's not just a piece of paper.
Good evening. Can we have Courtney Lynham join us up on stage, please? When the art department was asked to nominate a student for an award in tonight's ceremony, it was not a difficult decision to choose Courtney Lynham. While each of us is lucky enough to work with many talented, dedicated students every day, there are a few that put so much thought, creativity, and pure joy into their work. Not only did Courtney take two art classes her senior year, she also spent the majority of her lunch and free periods in the art room honing her craft. Courtney shares her love of art with her family, teachers and fellow students every single day, often with her sketchbook, and often gifting her, her own work to, to her peers as well as creating portraits in many of her classes. Courtney is currently spending her senior project working at a gallery on Coventry dedicated to selling and promoting the work of local artists. Doubtless it won't be long before Courtney is a recognized member of that community herself. Courtney plans to attend the Cleveland Institute of Art in the spring, where she hopes to double major in graphic design and illustration. We know that she will be a great success in all she does and that, and that her art will continue to bring joy to herself and to those around her. Congratulations, Courtney, and cheers to your next artistic adventure. Good evening. Would Ebony Gray please come forward? The bright lights, it's hard to take you out. <laughs> My name is Jean Heflick, and I'm a 1964 graduate of Cleveland Heights High School. And I'm here on behalf of the family of Ruth Friedman. Ruth was my aunt. Um, my mother, her sister, and my Aunt Flora are also graduates of Cleveland Heights High School, and there's nine of us nieces and nephews spread across the country. In the senior year, Aunt Ruth was the advertising manager for the Black and Gold. She fell in love with the advertising business and turned this into her career for more than six decades. Over the years, the friends that she made in the advertising field and her co-workers, they were among her closest friends. She joined a prominent local advertising agency in 1939, and she was one of the very few women in the city who had responsibility for a major account. She was really skilled in working with people, uh, buying media, uh, magazines, billboards, um, and her greatest achievement was her long-term relationships with her clients. And some of those were the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, b, b Appliance, and Swingo's Restaurant. She had a reputation for fairness, honesty, and loyalty that was renowned in a business that is sometimes characterized by short-term relationships. In August of 1966, when Aunt Ruth was ill, um, all of us in the family told her we wanted to do something in her honor, and that was uh, decided to um, be a scholarship uh, to provide opportunities and recognition for a high school student from Cleveland Heights High School 
who shows great promise in the field of advertising, marketing, communications. The field has changed in these 20 years since Aunt Ruth has passed away, and there's so many other creative outlets that are very similar. Um, we are excited that Ebony Gray has applied for the scholarship. She's prepared herself for college by taking honors and advanced placement classes. She has told us that school and community activities are a very important part of her life. And she's excelled in time management so she can blend all these things together. She's a leader, a helper, and a true friend to many. She'll be majoring in media communications at Point Park University in the fall. And she plans to prepare for a career in media broadcasting. So we want to congratulate Ebony and wish her well and present her with a scholarship. Thank you. Good evening. Jasmine Shaw, would you join me? Yvonne, if you're in the, if you haven't uh, arrived, um, you may come up and assist if you'd like. Scholarship Committee. Yvonne Bradford is our president. The Black and Government's mission is to provide a platform for the advocacy of equal employment opportunity for blacks and minorities in all aspects of government. Our strategy for pursuing our mission is by encouraging pride and motivation, promoting professional development, collaborating with other minorities and organizations to further unite a coalition to improve employee relations for the benefit of all public servants. It is our purpose to ensure civil servants achieve excellence and greater opportunities within the workplace and communities. This evening, we are honored, come on over Jasmine. <laughs> this evening, we are honored to participate in your ceremonies to present an award to Jasmine whom has expressed a passion for obtaining knowledge and successfully maintaining determination to reach her goals. She has further expressed her willingness to tackle the next phase of her life by attending college to obtain a medical degree to serve as an anesthesiologist. Amen. We believe that her ability to successfully tackle the challenges in her life have prepared her for this journey. Jasmine, we, the Lake Erie Chapter of Blacks in Government, embrace you as you embark on this new journey and provide you with this scholarship to assist you during your first semester of college. Please accept our 2015 Albert Taylor Memorial Scholarship with our sincere appreciation and congratulations. Good evening. Will Emily Benson please come to the stage? I am 
Renee Ethel White, and this evening I'm representing the Greater Cleveland Chapter of the Ohio Retired Teachers Association. This evening, Hi there. Emily is receiving a $500 scholarship from the Greater Cleveland Chapter of the Ohio Retired Teachers Association. Each year, the uh, chapter selects two schools. One is a Cleveland Municipal School District school, and one a suburban school district. And we were very delighted, especially me as a Cleveland Heights resident, that uh, Cleveland Heights High School, University Heights High School, was selected for that second scholarship this year. Um, Emily is already, you've seen so much of her on the stage, so there's not a whole lot more to say. But we were really torn. We had a number of applications from Heights High, and we were um, really torn in making our selection. But we feel we made the right selection, and we congratulate you, Emily, as you continue your education at the Ohio State University. <laughs> Thank you, and you do well there, too, as you pursue your uh, degree in education. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Carol Yu, and I'll be actually uh, presenting two awards, one of which is not your program. The Blakeman K Scholarship Fund. Alessandra Manfredi, please step forward. The Rotary Club of Shaker Heights annually awards scholarships to graduating seniors from area high schools who will be attending college in the fall of 2015. Interested students must demonstrate a record of academic achievement and community service. This year, each scholarship is in the amount of $2,000. <laughs> Alessandra Manfredi is an outstanding student, compassionate, and driven person. Ali has overcome great academic and personal obstacles to become the incredible individual she is now. Allie was born with a neurological problem that wasn't able to be identified at that time, which made her have many difficulties in early life. She had to undergo occupational and physical therapy. Not only did she overcome them, she has become a shining star on stage as a very talented dancer. She used her struggles and put them into a positive endeavor by working many years with Broadway buddies to share the stage with a friend program which uplifts and reaches out to students with special needs through dance and helps them put on musicals. These experiences have, has given her the motivation to enter the helping field of dance therapy, which she will pursue in college. In addition to many programs and clubs she has volunteered in, Allie is also a very ambitious and motivated student. Allie was diagnosed with dyslexia in middle school. From someone who has struggled so much in middle school to someone who has taken honors courses throughout her high school, and now in her senior year taking five college courses in addition to high tie courses, is testimony to Allie's need to feed her drive and enhance her ambition. She has worked twice as hard as her peers to understand what she is reading, and yet she has taken courses of rigor and has a 3.8 GPA. back in her life and not only defies it by working through it, but uses her experiences to help others. She is a living example of perseverance and compassion. Because of these and many more qualities, I am proud to announce she is the recipient of the Blakeman Quay Scholarship Fund. 
congratulations. She taught alternative as well as the traditional classes. She was the advisor of the literary magazine. She had an amazing sense of humor, but what is most remembered about Dorothy is that she was a very, very dedicated teacher who loved her students and expected the best of them, and she was very much loved by her students. This memorial scholarship is awarded to a student who has worked diligently and showed much improvement in their writing skills. This year's recipient is Sarah Lentz. Catherine Strine, Sarah's English teacher, wrote the following. I elect Sarah Lentz to receive this award because of her vast improvement in writing dur during her time in AP literature. Looking at Sarah's essay scores throughout the year, she has improved and maintained her essay scores. During one quarter, she received C's on in-class essays. By quarter two, she received A's on the same type of essays. She accepted constructive feedback, participated in class, and worked hard to improve her essay scores. Now, during quarter three, she maintains A's on her essays. Most recently, she earned 95% on a challenging essay prompt, where the majority of her peers earned 60%. Her meticulous attention to detail applied to these essays is one of the main reasons why Sarah's writing has improved. These are the main reasons why Sarah Lenz deserves the Dorothy I. Cove Krause Memorial Scholarship. Congratulations. Will Dominic Tuturo please come up to the stage? Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Larry Shaw, and I'm on the Barton Banner Carter uh, Memorial uh, Hockey Fund. Um, this was, the award was established in 2001 uh, when, unfortunately, uh, three Heights High hockey players uh, were untimely uh, killed in an automobile accident. Uh, Kyle Barton, uh, Brendan Benner, and Milton Carter, Jr. Uh, in their honor, we have established the Bar Benner Carter Fund, and it goes to a member of the hockey community, and it is a community, and uh, each year, and uh, uh, I will say that uh, Dominic Dutero is an excellent recipient this year. Dominic is an excellent student, as his choice of uh, several colleges, and uh, uh, as the only senior on the Heights High team, which was very young, and uh, but uh, won the uh, the weight division with a 24, three, and two record, and finished uh, close to second in the Baron Cup two tournament. Um, we hope that this award of three thousand dollars will help Dominic in his choice of colleges. Uh, he has a choice of several. Dominic.
with Nick Cicero, Xander Perlman, Garrison Lash, and Aaron Stanage come to the stage, please. My name is Kim Lash. I'm a counselor here at Cleveland Heights High School, and I also was a very good friend of Errol Lieberman. Errol Lieberman had the love of baseball in his blood since he was a young boy. Growing up in Cleveland Heights, he played baseball from youth until his graduation in 1968, and he graduated from Cleveland Heights High School. His athletic prowess earned him a baseball scholarship at Arizona State University. However, he wanted to be close to home, and he ended up coming back after his first year and went to Kent State University, where he uh, played baseball as a varsity, well, as a college player until he graduated. After graduation, he also coached baseball at Cleveland Heights High School until 1976, uh, when he became a financial planner. But knowing Errol the way that I did, I will tell you, baseball was the love of his life. He returned to Cleveland Heights, actually, in 2004 as a substitute teacher and was the Tigers varsity coach for two seasons until his untimely death. He loved baseball and he loved watching his players work hard and get stronger and excel. Coach Mugridge, the coach of this year's varsity team, wrote, based on commitment and dedication to the baseball program over the past four years, I selected the following. Nick Cicero, Garrison Lash, Xander Perlman, and Aaron Stanage. Congratulations to all of you who I know work very hard. And congratulations on a fabulous season. Let's give them all a round of applause. Good evening. Could I have Kelly Howard come to the stage, please? My name is Willie Newton, and I'm the head wrestling coach here at Cleveland Heights High School. And I'm here to present the Mark Matavina Scholarship Award. Mark Matavina was the first wrestling coach here at Cleveland Heights High School. He coached from 1954 until 1968. And in fact, he coached his first wrestling match right here on the stage. Uh, Mr. Matavina was an Indiana High School State champ and is an Indiana High School Hall of Fame. He's a Big Ten champion and captain at Purdue University, assistant wrestling coach at Ohio State University, and was inducted to the Ohio Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1976. But perhaps what he was most remembered for was his humbleness, his love for the sport of wrestling, and his love for his wrestlers. As a former Heights wrestler myself, I could remember always wanting to meet Mr. Matavina and not getting a chance, only to find out later in life that he was always at my matches, rooting for our team, uh, behind the scenes and never wanting the recognition that he deserved. He was always there and always about the team. So for me, it only made sense that I chose this young man standing here tonight to be the recipient of such a great award started in honor of such a selfless man. This young man that I'm speaking of 
has been humble and all about team since the first day I met him. In a sport like wrestling, it is very easy to focus just on self and your personal goals, but not this guy. He was always looking for a way to make his teammates better. This young man started off with a very rocky wrestling career, but did his best to remain positive for the team. He has gone through many obstacles on and off the mat and managed to have a smile along the way. I must admit that at times we did not see eye to eye because I felt he was too focused on my approval. I would say to him that the moment he chose wrestling, he got my approval. Who cares about wins and losses? That was not enough for him. He worked extremely hard the summer going into his senior year and came back stronger than he'd ever been. He finished his senior season 28 and 10. That's 28 wins and 10 losses, I'm sorry. He was a district qualifier and he was the most valuable wrestler on the team. And, and by the way, all of those attributes are way better than his head coaches when I was here. Um, it is with great love, honor, and respect that I present to you this year's Mark Madavina Scholarship recipient, Kelly Howard. Uh, along with going down in history, Kelly will also get a $500 scholarship towards college. I'm sorry. Juliana Sorio, come on down. Congratulations, seniors. It is a privilege to be with you tonight. I'm very hungry. <laughs> My name is Rosalind Robinson, and I'm with Parker Hannafin Corporation. Parker Hannafin is the global leader in motion and control technologies. And we're proud to be based here in Cleveland since 1914. At Parker, we engineer success. Hi. Parker has a rich tradition of community involvement. Today, we continue to our support of academic excellence by awarding the 2015 Parker Hannafin Foundation Scholarship for the pursuit of higher education in a technical field. Not only does this scholarship offer financial support, it also comes with the opportunity to be considered for an internship position at Parker next summer. I hope you apply. This year's recipient will be pursuing a chemical engineering degree at the University of Delaware. Parker was definitely impressed with your drive and your commitment to solving problems as well as helping others. And those are qualities that will ensure a bright future for you. So, Parker is delighted to award this year's scholarship to you, Juliana Sorio. High School. Uh, she contacted us a few years ago and said she really wanted to give back to the place that helped her to get ahead in her life. Uh, Tamara believes that a patriot is one who loves and defends his or her country. Uh, in the past five years, she's written a personal check of $1,000 
for a student, for a Cleveland Heights student who is enlisting in the U.S. military. This scholarship is being awarded to Solomon Collins. <laughs> Solomon made the decision to join the military, and more specifically, the United States Marine Corps. to the world to do his part in helping and protecting the people in it. Solomon's future plans include being a police officer. Solomon, congratulations. Emily Vincent, why don't you just stay on stage? The Cleveland Heights Teachers Union is uh, proud to uh, establish a, a scholarship for uh, someone going into education. Little did we know that she might be an administrator, otherwise it might have been a little bit different. <laughs> so, uh, Glenn Alshult uh, is actually someone who's still alive. He was a president uh, two presidents ago, so it means he retired in 1992 or so. Uh, and uh, we've established a, a scholarship for somebody interested in education. So that's Emily. Now, I could read what Jackie had written about her, but I'm not going to because my, my memory is better than the, the sheet. And it goes something like this, because I won't be long, but uh, I met Emily probably when she was maybe three or four years old because her older sister was in kindergarten with my daughter. And then uh, Emily and my younger daughter were in Girl Scouts together and I got to be the cookie mom and stuff like that. So. Uh, I could tell you stories, but it's a, this has got to be a well-deserved award, and uh, Emily has done, uh, really blossomed over the years. And there are a few years in middle school we could just not think about, but otherwise, uh, she's, really, she's really a remarkable person, and I think that uh, the Heights community will miss her next year. Uh, so, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I am here to award the Aspiring Educators Award uh, on behalf of a large number of our district administrators. If we can have our 2015 recipients come to the stage, Sydney Bennett, Danielle Clemens, Shalisha Evans, and Diamond White. This is a scholarship that's given by our Educational Administrative uh, and Professional Council to graduating students who will major in education uh, and have demonstrated educational leadership. Uh, our students that are here on the stage with us this, this evening are students that represent much of what Cleveland Heights has to offer academically and socially. They have accepted the challenge of taking AP classes. They have been involved in numerous school and community activities, as well as being gainfully employed. Uh, Sydney Bennett, if you could step forward. Sydney has earned a musical award in OMEA competition. She founded the Heights High Literary Society and has been the president for the past two years. She is a very sensitive and a wise young lady that has a heart to give to others. Since she was in third grade, Sydney has always wanted to be an elementary teacher uh, and plans to attend Cleveland State University to major in elementary education. Thank you, Sydney. Danielle, step forward, Danielle. Danielle is fun, quirky, and very polite. She's the president of the Lights, Camera, and Action Club. She does improv and was in this year's talent show with an amazing dance performance. Recently, she started her own business uh, regard, with regards to crafts and, and hair design. 
Uh, Danielle will attend Cleveland State University and will major in education, specifically dealing with students that are hearing impaired. She will have a minor in business as well. <laughs> Shalisha, step forward. Shalisha is very involved in her vocal music with her vocal lessons, performing in the gospel choir and directing the children's ministry at her church. She is in several clubs, programs that enhance the leadership, her leadership skills. She is very quiet, but very articulate, bright, and polite. She plans to be a music teacher at her elementary school. She plans to be a music teacher uh, at an elementary school and also to pursue her dream of being on Broadway. She will attend Bowling Green State University in the fall and will major in music education. Thank you. Diamond. Diamond is the captain of the varsity bowling team. She loves stage crew, improv, and the poetry club. She is quiet, a great friend, and very nice. She wants to be a preschool teacher. Uh, Diamond will attend Bowling Green State University uh, and will major in early childhood education in the fall. I want to say that I am proud of each of you and that your hard work and effort over the last four years in high school has a tremendous impact on our community, and I want to thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Kelvin Calhoun. I'm a 1985 graduate of Cleveland High School. We'll be presenting uh, Brothers and Sisters Scholarship for Academic Excellence. And uh, we have two recipients. One is uh, Danielle Clemens. The other is Jaylon Butler. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I don't think Jaylon is available today. He had uh, prior obligations with the uh, track meet and districts. So we just had Danielle today. Each student will receive a $1,500 scholarship to help with their college education. As stated before, Danielle will be attending Cleveland State University, majoring uh, in hearing impaired education as well as business. Jaylon will be attending the University of Charleston, and uh, he'll be majoring in athletic training. Oh, okay. J-Line's sister is going to be accepted. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I just really want to say congratulations to you guys, but also that we stand here as representatives of numerous brothers and sisters. But we're also here representing other proud alumni of Cleveland Heights High. And we just want to say that their collective efforts um, just really want to instill in you a belief in giving back and just hopefully we're demonstrating that we have the utmost faith and hope for you and your future. So. Good evening, my name is Yakub Basi and I'm a proud 1987 graduate of Cleveland Heights High School and also a proud member of the Brothers Organization. Uh, the Brothers were started in the winter of 1977 by eight young men who were not only outstanding athletic uh, students here at Cleveland Heights High School, but they also grew up in Cleveland Heights and they had a bond. And they thought that their bond transcended more than just teammates and uh, schoolmates, and thus the name Brothers was chosen. And each year since, uh, proud young men who have come into Cleveland Heights and who have uh, they have observed with uh, academic excellence as well as being uh, outstanding on basketball, track, and football. They were afforded the privilege to become a part of the organization. Uh, the Sisters were started a couple of years later in 1980, in the winter of 1980. And uh, again, the same criteria was met by those young ladies who, uh, who wanted to be a part of something special. So it's with great honor and pride that um, we're giving out this award to these uh, fine individuals this evening. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, one of those eight individuals who started the Brothers organization was Michael Magruder, who was probably most well known for playing in the uh, Super Bowl with the New England Patriots. He is unable to be here today as he had a prior obligation, but he sends his well regards and definitely wanted to, uh, to make it. Would Alexandra Harper please come to the podium? Although I know she's in a track meet now, I think her mom will. Oh, she's here, okay, great. This year's recipient of the Mike Magruder Platinum Charity Scholarship is Alexandria Harper. Mike Magruder was an All-American football player in the National Football League. He played in the Super Bowl with the New England Patriots as a cornerback. This Cleveland Heights school track football, football and track standout, I'm sorry, began his professional career as a four-year starter at Kent State University. In choosing this year's recipient, Alexander is an athlete and a brilliant student. She is a four-year member of the girls' volleyball, basketball, track, and football teams. She is a member of both the National Honor Society and the National Technical Honor Society. Some of her additional school activities include being a student ambassador for the uh, Mosaic and Student Athletic Advisor. Congratulations, Alexander. of the Tiger Shop Scholarship come to the stage. Karima Wagner, Raven Lewis, Takari Jackson, and Kelly Howard. I'm Laura Stewart Lilly, and I'm a, the, one of the transition coordinators here at the high school. And this is Ms. Pam Fishman. She runs our in-school work lab, and it is through her hard work and dedication that we have this scholarship because she runs the Everything Tiger Shop. The Tiger Shop Scholarship is made possible through the sale of Everything Tiger Shop Sportswear. These scholarships recognize students who have set goals and attained those goals with dignity, heart, and perseverance. We are proud to honor the recipients of the Everything Tiger Shop Scholarship. My name is Carla Bailey, and I am host mom and sponsor program coordinator with the AFS Foreign Exchange Program. Cleveland Heights High has been hosting AFS students and sending American students abroad for over 54 years. This year's exchange students, uh, let me call them up. Ade Sakina, it's my daughter. <laughs> Philip Bubbles. Owen Kamau, Dion Stella, Maria Juicy Brunelli, Mariam Suleiman, that's my other daughter, Kat Crops, Max Tobin, and Mohamedoun Degan is, um, he's not here, he uh, made it to districts and he's running in the track meet. So these students have come here. They flew from large cities and tiny villages. They come from Europe, Asia, Africa, 
and Le in South America. They arrived in America in August, and they lived with one year with myself and other host families in the Cleveland Heights uh, city. This group is one of the hardest working, most active group of exchange students that we've had in a long time. They're all striving to make the most of their American high school experience by getting good grades, and they all managed to pass all five parts of our Ohio graduation test. <laughs> they will all receive a certificate of completion and appreciation for becoming an asset to my home for a year, a day. Um, an asset to Cleveland Heights High School and an asset to the Heights High community. And if anyone wants to host one of these students next year or in the future, let me know. Thank you. Silverman, Heights High Class of 87, uh, Executive Director of the Cleveland Heights High School Alumni Foundation, and a member of the Cleveland Heights University School Board. Uh, between my 10 years on the school board and years with the Alumni Foundation, this is my 22nd senior awards, so I'm starting to feel old. Um, the Cleveland Heights High School Alumni Association was created by the school board in 1995 to increase awareness of the achievements and accomplishments of Heights High students, our current students, and our alumni as well. In 2001, the Alumni Foundation was created as a separate 501c3 nonprofit. In 2004, the two organizations merged and the foundation took on the responsibilities of the association. Those include, we have, actually we just launched our website, go take a look at it, heightsalumni.org, and a Facebook group, but everyone has Facebook, so that's not that interesting. Um, we do a newsletter twice a year. We partnered with the school district and launched HeightsGear.com, which is an e-commerce website uh, between sizes, colors, and styles. There are over 2,500 different options. And as the parents of graduates, I would highly encourage you to check out HeightsGear.com for graduation gifts. Um, we held the 35th Alumni Hall of Fame at Landerhaven. That was uh, last month. And in November, we hold a cocktail party at the wine spot. Our scholarship program, is funded primarily, not primarily, but substantially by our pancake breakfast, which we just held in the, in the cafeteria here at Heights with over 500 attendees. And we do all this work without any paid staff, just some very tired and dedicated volunteers. Now, our scholarship program has gone from one scholarship to four, to this year we have 18 different scholarships. Um, in 2015, our, the total sum of all the awards we'll be giving out this evening is over $37,000. 63 students, 15% of the student population of the senior class, applied for one or more of our scholarships. That totaled over 170 unique applications to review. Um, two of our scholarships received 20 applications alone. A um, couple, I, unfortunately, I'm usually at the intersection of different data sets, which shows our era when you use the phrase data set. One of the things that was interesting this year is that 80% of our applicants were female. So my question to the gentleman of Heights High, fill out some paperwork and get a check. So I would encourage, encourage them for next year. The other thing too, as a member of the Board of Education, I was curious to see how many of our students, our seniors, start with us in kindergarten. And, and less than 40% actually start with us in kindergarten. 70% of this year's applicants start with us in kindergarten. So I just thought it was interesting that a lot of the students who we have coming, they've been with us since kindergarten. Now we have a lot of scholarships. So I'm gonna, and I know Zorba said to be brief, so I'm gonna try to go through. So fortunately, my speaking fast will be advantageous. Um, we used to have a principal at Heights who was notorious for mispronouncing names. I will apologize, it seemed like he did it on purpose. I apologize in advance for the names that I mangle or mispronounce. So if I could have Keely Atat, which is a good one, Keely Atat come to the stage for the Shrek and Gus Design Scholarship. Uh, 
Victor Scharkengas is often referred to as an American da Vinci, was an artist who worked in various mediums over the course of his life. His work in the field that would become known as industrial design, creative designs and concepts still used today. An artist who worked in ceramics, created sculptures and painted in oils and watercolors, he is also known for his designs for mass-produced dinnerware, the millions of bicycles and pedal cars that were created to his designs, and the descendants of his concept for the first cab over engine truck can be seen on America's highways today. Uh, well, now that graduated Cleveland Heights High School, Mr. Scharkengast lived in Cleveland Heights for over 50 years, and his stepchildren and grandchildren are Heights alumni. A supporter of the Heights schools, before Tiger Nation, he designed the mascot for Roxborough Elementary School. Uh, this scholarship is awarded to a student attending college with the goal of a career in art, design, or architecture. Congratulations. If I could have uh, Sydney Bennett and Sharice Harris come to the stage for the Deb Delisle Scholarship. <laughs> Deb Delisle was superintendent of the Cleveland Heights University at School District from 2000, 2003 to 2008, before coming to the State of Ohio Superintendent of Public Instruction. She's currently Assistant Secretary for Elementary and Secondary Education in the Obama Administration. Uh, this scholarship honors the achievements and spirit of Ms. Delisle, a first-generation college graduate herself, by extending her legacy in a way she would find most rewarding, helping a student to have the same opportunities provided to her. It's awarded to a graduating first-generation college bound senior with a GPA of 3.0 or better. So congratulations. Chipletti is a former administrator in the high school system. Mr. Chipletti earned his BA in John Carroll before receiving his master's at Kent. After 11 years in the Cleveland Public Schools, Mr. Chipletti became principal of Wiley O'Reilly Hill for 20 years. Mr. Chipletti was then tapped to be administrative principal at Cleveland Heights High, a position he held for five years before retiring. Showing his continued support of Heights, Chip is an alumni foundation trustee. This scholarship is awarded to a graduating college bound senior who intends to become an educator. Um, Mr. Chipletti chipped a lot of folks. He's a great guy. He's a real match, and we, we really appreciate him. And, and you, I'm sure a lot of folks have seen him. He still does a lot of stuff around the high school. So, congratulations. You get another one, son. You better follow me. Miss Blocks. Um, if I could have uh, Cesne Watkins, Evan O'Dean, Nicholas Cicero, Kristen Gustafson, Alessandra Manfredi, and Evan's already up on the stage for the Legend Scholarship. This is awarded to a graduating senior with a GPA of 3.0 or better. The recipient must be a student at Cleveland Heights High School for at least two years and have at least one parent parent, grandparent, what have you, who is a graduate of Heights High. Um, we have one recipient who receives a scholarship, and everyone else is receiving $250 in gift certificates to Bed Bath & Beyond, Office Max, uh, iTunes, Amazon, things to use after college. And then we also have a $50 gift certificate to HeightsGear.com, so hopefully they'll come to the sale on May 30th, as well as many of you as well. So congratulations to all of our legends. and. And if I could have Cessna stay on stage for the next scholarship. This is for the, and if I could have Danielle Clemens join us on the stage for the Youth Blitz and Creative Writing Scholarship. This is a word in memory of Judith Lixon, a class of 1947 Heights High graduate, a member of the Cleveland Heights Distinguished Honorable Alumni Hall of Fame, and a member of the Cleveland Heights University School Board. Um, before Ms. Glickson passed away, she had begun some of the work that led to the Alumni Association. Uh, so this is a creative writing scholarship that we give in our memory every year, and I've got uh, a couple checks. So, why don't we? Michaela Lewis, 
come to the stage for the Masengo Scholarship. This is uh, our first year for the scholarship. Uh, Major James D. Masengo, class of 78, graduated, I'm sorry, attended John Carroll University on an Army ROTC scholarship. After graduation, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant. From 1982 to 89, he was stationed in Germany, eventually commanding an M1 tank company along the West German border. He was transferred to the University of Akron, Department of Military Science, and he worked survival assistance during Operation Desert Storm. He left the Army in 1993, earning his MBA from the University of Akron, majoring in international business. In 1999, he was called back to active duty for a tour during the Bosnia Herzegovina during his to Bosnia Herzegovina during his stay there. Major Masengo currently manages over $100 million for AIG Valak and has a part-time lecturer at the University of Akron. He has served as treasurer of the Cleveland Heights High School Alumni Foundation since 2001. Uh, and a lot of our success and our ability to have the, the resources to give out these scholarships is due to his hard work. Uh, the scholarship is awarded to a student who is joining the military or participating in ROTC while away at college. Applicants whose parents were honorably discharged from active duty service or attending college may also apply. Uh, so, Ms. Blocks. Congratulations, Ms. Blocks. <laughs> If I could have Sylvia Ian Marino come to the stage for the Bart Wallstein Scholarship. <laughs> Bart Wallstein was a 1945 graduate of high, 1945 graduate and a member of the Cleveland Heights High Distinguished Alumni Hall of Fame. Uh, he's known for his success in real estate development. Uh, in two companies he established, one is Developers Diversified and the other one is Heritage Development. Uh, Mr. Wallstein and his wife Iris, class of 1947, are also known for their philanthropic work throughout Cleveland. Uh, Mr. Wallstein actually had a vision that's coming to fruition now, which is the development on the uh, east bank of the flats. That was something he really wanted to have happen, and his wife and son had been able to make it happen. Uh, this is in memory of Mr. Wallstein to a grad and awarded to a graduating college bond senior, intending to major in business, finance, or economics. Um, Sylvia's application referenced an uh, Italian restaurant that's very famous in Little Italy, um, and I have to say that uh, the one that she referenced is Pizza's much better than the much more notorious one at Mayfield. So congratulations to, to Sylvia. And if I could, it should be joined by Celia, Celia Van de Boger as well for the Cass Maggots Scholarship. A, A passionate supporter of public education, Marion graduated from Heights in 1953. She and her family moved to Berkeley, California in 1967 to participate. They were doing an integration program in the uh, school district there, and she was very passionate about that, and she wanted to have her kids go to that system. Um, she represented the Oakland Public Schools and the Contra Costa County Office of Education for 10 years, 10 years each, and then worked as a consultant to the Berkeley School, school District after retirement. Um, her continue, she continued her community work through Rotary, Hadassah, and the Kennedy King Scholarship. This, uh, this is a creative writing scholarship awarded in her memory. So congratulations. Okay, I'm in the home stretch, I think. If I could have Brittany Rabb come to the stage for the Faye Memorial Scholarship. This is awarded to a graduating senior active in instrumental music, vocal music, and drama, and is in memory of Kevin Fahey, Cl Fahey, class of 77. Before a successful career in advertising at Yale University, Kevin was drum major for the marching band, played saxophone and bassoon in other bands, sang with nine singers, and participated in numerous theater productions inside and out of high time. So congratulations, Brittany. And if Brittany could be joined on the stage by Alicia Yanegra, Brittany Rabb is already here, and Nicholas Cicero come to the stage as well. This is the Alma Mater Scholarship. Uh, Heights alumni are proud of their, of their high school alma mater, and they're also proud of their college alma mater. So with this in mind, the Alumni Foundation created an alma mater scholarship designed for, we identified the top schools that are Heights alumni attended, um, was about 35 schools. Um, we don't have the time to do one for every school, so we've done it broken into three regions, east, west, and Ohio. Uh, 
Nicholas, unfortunately none of our West Coast students actually end up going West Coast, uh, but Miami of Ohio is about two miles from the Indiana border, so we were happy to, to give it to Nicholas. So congratulations to all three of you. Because starting in 2006, which was the year my daughter graduated and um, was a senior in the department, they began going on the annual tour. I don't know why they all stand way over there. They began going on the annual tour with the vocal arts um, group. And they always came to the performances, they came to the musicals, they came to the concerts even after their grandchildren had graduated from Cleveland Heights High School. Um, my mother died in 2011, and friends of mine decided that a wonderful way to honor her and also to remember my service to the vocal music department here at Cleveland Heights High School would be to have a scholarship named in her honor. My father died in 2013, and one of the last places he came before he went to the hospital for the last time was right here to see um, Phantom of the Opera. So um, Cleveland Heights High School was very, very important to them. They were also both lifelong musicians and lifelong learners. Earlier, David Budin said that uh, art and music are as important as math and science. I'd like to take it a little bit further and say that art and music teach math and science. So they are very important to all of us and very important to the community. Michael Carter is a recipient of the award this year. And Michael is exactly the kind of student my parents would be honored to have get this award. Uh, Michael is one of those students who always goes above and beyond and without being asked. Uh, during his time with the vocal music department, he began making videos of the tours. No one asked him to do it. He would take pictures. He would solicit pictures from other kids on the tour and then put them to music so that there was a video memory of the tours. Right? Um, I'm sorry. Michael is one of the last students receiving this award who actually remembers my parents, or at least my dad. So this is very important. So I would like to say without further ado, congratulations, Michael, and good luck. Would Caitlin Wolpen please come to the stage? The Sandra Beck Wessler Memorial Scholarship uh, is very special to Eric because Sandy was his aunt. Uh, so he asked me to do this for him. Sandra Beck graduated from Cleveland Heights High School in June of 1965. She chose not to go to college and went to work as a secretary immediately after graduation. Sandy was diagnosed with leukemia in February of 1966. In May of that year, she married her high school sweetheart, Barry Wessler. Sandy passed away in August of that same year. This scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior 
with the goal, who will attend college with the goal of career in medicine, and that's Caitlin Wolman. come to the stage along with uh, members of the Goldstein family. This is for the uh, Dr. Sidney Goldstein Scholarship. Uh, in honor of their 75th birthday, the June class of 52 established a scholarship fund in order to give back to their alma mater and help support current Heights High students. Uh, the scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior with a minimum GPA of 2.8 who intends to further their education by pursuing a course of study that will prepare them for a career in public service. Uh, the applicant must have worked in or volunteered in the public sector and articulate the area of public service they are interested in, as well as why they feel it's important to dedicate oneself to public service. Hi, my name is Matt, and Sid Goldstein was my grandfather and a personal hero. He taught us to treat others with dignity and to love unconditionally. We will never forget how kindly he acted and how much he loved to laugh. These pillars defined who he was and why he firmly believed in supporting the community and volunteering to positively impact others. Throughout his life, he volunteered and supported multiple nonprofit organizations in the greater Cleveland area, including the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, where he served as president. Emily embodies our grandfather's belief in dedicating yourself to helping others. Thank you. stage, um, I'd like to thank our Alumni Foundation President Harold Mendez and his wife for supporting the foundation with this, this excellent scholarship program. And I'll let now Rosie's going to take it over. My name is Rosie Mendez Ford, and together with my parents, Harold and Barbara Mendez, we are honored to announce the winners of the 2015 Joseph and Molly Mendez Memorial Scholarship and you'll hear a little bit more about the scholarship um, in a minute, but we'd like to call the 19 recipients of this year's award up to the stage. Kayla Banks, Miriam Bennett, Anna Brock, Cheyenne Charles, Miranda Kobel, Arshan Cox, Maya Fields, Alexandra Harper, Sarah Harrington, Eli Kaufman, Taylor Lawson, April Matthews, Shemaya Nikosi, Amari Regless, Amani Smith, Juliana Sorio, Emily Vinson, Simone Wright Bay, and Anne Zakari. Quite a gang of great students. <clears throat> Hello, my name is is Harold Mendes, and the first time I walked across this stage was 70 years ago, in 1945, when I graduated from Heights High School. Since then, the Heights system has educated over 23 members of our family, and as we have done for the past 20 years, to honor my mother and father, Joseph Mendes and Molly Mendes, who never had an opportunity to go to college, we are presenting scholarships to deserving Heights students. The criteria for these scholarships are that the student must have attended Wiley, uh, where my wife was a counselor for many years, or Coventry, or Garrity, where my son Joseph is currently a teacher. All of the students had to submit an essay advising us on their future goals. I recently read the following statement in a local paper about giving back. 
and it goes like this. Society benefits greatly when old men plant trees whose shade they will never sit under. This is our philosophy, and this is our goal. And now Barbara has yes. a few comments to make. Yes. My dear husband is going to celebrate his 88th birthday next month. I think he just for that. Okay, good evening everyone. I'm Barbara Mendes. This is my daughter Rosie. Come over here. She's my baby. I want to tell you a little bit about her and she's going to help us give out college scholarships this year. Rosie learned to read at Canterbury Elementary School. 23 in our family have attended the high schools and we are very proud of them. She finished her education at the University of Michigan and became a well-respected student advisor at the University of Georgia, where she, wore, where she won many national awards. So she's going to help us because we're getting pretty old and feeble. Stand over there. We have a great group of recipients again this year. They are curious, motivated, focused, they respect themselves, they're mature, and they have a passion for their areas of interest. We heard from their teachers that they came to school on time, they were prepared, they were engaged in class, <coughs> class and in school and neighborhood activities. They are great role models. They work part-time, many of them, after school. On weekends, they found time to volunteer in worthwhile programs, and yet they stayed very involved in the music, athletic, and academic leadership programs here at Heights. And they are kind to each other and to others in their class. That's their best quality. They are positive role models for those that need support. That's why they're up here. And they have plans for the future you wouldn't believe. They have done their research. We have a pool of aspiring students here. When I, when I talk about your area, I want you to raise your hand. We have the students who are want to be psychologists. Raise your hand and be proud. Get it up there. We have fashion designer, retail business owner. Where is she? There she is. And you don't have to clap now because I have an awful lot to say. We have engineers. There they are. Physician surgeon, where is she? An amazing girl. Physical therapist, sports medicine and nursing hopefuls, actors, performers, forensic scientists, law enforcers. We have an FBI agent lurking up here somewhere. Finance experts, and even a future superintendent. Where is she? Get your heart up there. And of course, there are a few of us who are still searching, sorting out interests and abilities, and that's fine. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life when I was 18 years old. I just knew that I had a friend going to Connecticut College, and I wanted to go with her. That was a lousy reason to go to that school. Hold on. One of our winners tonight is an amazing trumpet player. And she wrote in her essay, where are you, honey? There she is. That her childhood dream was to be a ballerina farmer rock star astronaut. <laughs> She's a great writer. Well, that dream is evolving into becoming part of an orchestra that records soundtracks for movies. 
But I wouldn't be surprised that she wouldn't do all those other things too because she's quite a girl. Our winners tonight have real goals. They're determined. They've already shown us that they can work hard. They want to be more independent. They want to be better leaders. Some of them told me they wanted to learn to speak out more and not be afraid of what they had to say. They want to travel. They want to know their larger world. They want to get involved in local and global humanitarian issues. They want to be involved in finding solutions to problems. There is no question that we need solutions. We already have the problems. We like, our family likes what we see up here. Look at them. Look how they're listening. Nobody's talking. They're just listening. So, we were in a very good mood this year. We did not plan to give scholarships to everyone who applied because there were 19 of them. But after we read what they had to say, we just had to do it. So each of them is going to get $1,000. Why? We want to demonstrate our faith in the students at Heights High School and the importance of the stories that every one of them have told us. We appreciate that they did the work that got them to this point. We appreciate that they believe in themselves. And we appreciate the fact that they are very, very kind to their classmates who need some support. I'd like to especially thank, there you are, raise your hand, a wonderful boy that took the time to help a fellow classmate who was struggling at school. These are the kind of behaviors that will continue to bring rewards to these students. They're climbing the stairs. They're on a journey to the stars and beyond, and they're not forgetting where they came from. Congratulations to them. Do not lose these checks. They're made out to you. You better give them right to your parents. Maybe they'll pay for some of your books. I hope so. And good luck to all of you. Sarah will be receiving a check for $1,000 as a top student, and we have a gift bag, but unfortunately all of the sizes are probably appropriate. I don't think you wear an extra large, so you'll have to exchange that for size, but we have a gift bag. I, just a couple passing thoughts, because you've suffered long enough through this evening. Um, the one thing I want to say, because I don't get to speak at graduation, um, the one thing I would say to the class of 2015, you are the last graduating class from Heights High tie in its current form. Your experience at Heights High has more in common with mine from 87, my father in 62, or Harold in 45. Um, as much as we're gonna keep it, a lot of the building and try to keep the flavor, your experience is gonna be much more in common with the 50,000 who went before you than the students who follow after you. Uh, so just, you know, it's not in your mind right now, but at least consider that and think about that. 
Um, the other thing I'd like to thank all the donors, supporters, and, and assistance we received with the Alumni Foundation that we were able to give out as many scholarships and as much as we did this year. Um, my hope is that next year we'll hit 20, so we'll have two full pages in the, in the program. And I also hope that it won't be so long an evening. So congratulations to the class of 2015, and thank you. and Amatayo Agaja join us on the stage. I am Katora Simmons and this is Valerie Moreland and we're the Cleveland Heights University Heights PTA Council co-presidents. This scholarship is the Barbara W. Hagee she was the president of the Cleveland Heights University Heights Council of PTAs in 1973 to 1974. Years after her children graduated and left the system, Barbara continued to serve council as the committee chair for the scholarship committee. Barbara passed away in 2002. Her cheerful, optimistic, youthful outlook will be missed by many who were fortunate to have known and worked with her. For her years of service, council exec voted to name the scholarship fund in her honor. These scholarships are awarded to acknowledge parents of high title graduates who were long-term dedicated child advocates and whose tireless efforts contributed greatly to the benefits of students, parents, and schools within this district. Each PTA unit contributes to the PTA, PTA Council Scholarship Fund, which in turn supplies scholarships to graduating Cleveland Heights High seniors. This year, PTA has awarded five scholarships. So on behalf of CHUHPTA Council, congratulations. Shay and Charles, please come up on stage. Good evening. The Medical Mutual of Ohio Scholarship is awarded to a Heights High senior who plans to pursue a career in the medical field. The recipient is chosen based on a combination of economic need and academic achievement. I'm happy to announce that this year's recipient is Cheyenne Charles. <laughs> Cheyenne has long been interested in a career in healthcare, inspired in part by the many health problems that have arisen in her own family. As part of her experience in the clinical health careers course, Cheyenne completed clinical rotations at Kaiser's Outpatient Center at a local hospital and the McGregor Nursing Home. Her warm and engaging personality, as well as the sensitivity and compassion extended to those in her care, have proven to me that she is truly in the right profession. Cheyenne is very focused and hardworking with a strong work ethic. She has earned college credits for medical terminology and bioethics, recently passed the Ohio State Tested Nursing Assistant exam, and will be inducted into the National Technical Honor Society next week. Shane has also participated in MSAN and Gospel Choir and has been active in the Open Doors Academy, serving as a volunteer and participating in service trips while also holding down a part-time job. Cheyenne plans to attend Xavier University of Louisiana in New Orleans this fall to pursue a career in medicine. Congratulations, Cheyenne, and we look forward to hearing about your future successes.
Would Brianna Smith please come up to the podium? The Helen Fox Award is in honor of Helen Fox, who was the founder of the Pride Program at Cleveland Heights High School in the 1980s. She had the insight, love, and courage to work with young people struggling with alcohol and drug abuse and many other challenging issues young people are faced with on a daily basis. It can be difficult to make the right choice when others try to influence you in the other, in the other direction. PRIDE stands for Prevention, Referral, Intervention, and Drug Education. Mrs. Fox was a pioneer in teaching the importance of helping young people make good, healthy decisions, not destructive ones. I am honored to present this award to Brianna Smith. She's a wonderful young lady, and she's an adopted daughter. I have had the privilege of knowing Brianna for her entire high school career at Cleveland Heights High School. She exemplifies the characteristics of Helen Fox and what the award stands for. Strong values and the ability to stand up for what is right, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Right? Right. <laughs> she's a true leader, and she's been an active member of Leading Ladies since her freshman year, which is an organization of young women in the high school which develops individuality, self-esteem, community service, and striving for excellence in all areas of your life. She is passionate and motivated by education, by life, by helping others, and I know that this award will continue to help her open the doors that will be open for her, because there'll be many. She is a talented, beautiful young woman, and whatever you put your mind to, you will always be successful. I feel honored to have known you during these years at Cleveland Heights High School. was established in 1984 in memory of Joseph J. Stuhl, who taught at Heights High School from 1968 until 1984. The requirements for this award are that the recipient eliminates the qualities which Joe demonstrated in his life. These qualities are compassion, trustworthy, and a pride in doing the best job possible. This year, recipient Devin Hosley Devin Business Management Technology teacher, Dr. Davis writes that Devin is a mature, goal-oriented, and well-spoken young man. He is an enthusiastic business scholar, always expecting the best of himself each semester. He is an articulate individual with an inquiring mind. His dedication and desire to succeed would take him to the highest level in any career he pursues. In addition to being very strong, being a very strong academic, being very strong academically, he is an avid community service-minded young man and has donated many volunteer hours in service in various nonprofit agencies. Finally, Devin has a constant positive attitude about school and life. He is not afraid to tackle life difficult challenges. Failure is not an option for him. I am confident that he will succeed in his future endeavors. Congratulations, Devin. Will Evan or Dean please join me on the stage? Mighty Mannering Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship was established in memory of Molly Mannering, who was a member of the Cleveland Heights High School Choir from 1969 to 1971. 
The recipient must be a member of the choir or high singers and have qualities of warmth, love, compassion, and deep sympathy. This year's recipient is Evan Adin. Evan is a extremely, talent, extremely talented young woman who is involved in our vocal musical program as a member of the acapella choir and singers. Evan is going to Case Western University, my alone, <laughs> to study musical theory. Theater, right? Theater and philosophy. Very good. We wish you the best of luck as you pursue your career in the musical and philosophy theater and looking forward to seeing you on Broadway. Congratulations. Can I get Sydney Bennett, Anna Brock, Michael Carter, Miranda Cobo, Wyatt Sutter, Ian Tosun Den Manny? Sorry. <laughs> I was trying, I was studying that name earlier. George Strickland Memorial Endower. Endowment Fund Scholarship. The George Strickland Memorial Scholarship is in honor of a formal Cleveland Heights High graduate who was a devoted member of the choir. This scholarship is based on a student contribution to the choir, academics, and citizenship. These students have received various honors and awards representing Heights Choir. They excel academically, taking the most challenging courses offered by Heights High, all of them have decided to further their education by attending college this fall. Congratulations. Good evening. Can we please have Michael Carter, Brianna Smith, and Miranda Coble join us on stage? My name is Mark Nicoletti. This is my good friend, Daryl Glenn. We're members of the Vocal Arts Parent Organization. Our organization exists solely to support the students and staff of the vocal music department. It is through our fundraising efforts that we're able to award scholarships to graduating seniors of the vocal music department. One part of our application process asks the students to describe his or her experience as a member of the VMD. Phrases like, I found a home away from home, made lifelong friendships, have learned the importance of fighting for your dreams, found a place of belonging, and even an aerobic workout, climbing all the stairs just to get to class, echoed loudly from all. Another section required the students to secure a letter of recommendation from a faculty or staff member at the high school. Words like well-organized, attentive, prepared, compassionate, passionate, leader, uplifting, asset, academically committed, and talented were eloquently used to describe these three students, both in the classroom and performing on stage alike. On behalf of the members of the Vocal Arts Parent Organization, it is our sincere honor and privilege to award Michael Carter a scholarship in the amount of $750.
Brianne Smith, a scholarship in the amount of $500, and Miranda Coble, a scholarship in the amount of $250. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with us this evening. I know it's late. Give yourselves a round of applause for sticking with us. Thank you. <laughs> Cleveland Heights High School offers a rich spectrum of advanced placement courses. Each year, hundreds of students participate in AP courses, which mirror college-level courses, classes. Every May, students may choose to take the AP exam for the subject he or she has been preparing for. Grades are released each July, and students have the ability to earn college credit and or advanced placement into specific college courses based on their AP exam grade. Each year, the College Board recognizes the many high school students who have been distinguished themselves academically by announcing AP award recipients. There are several types of awards granted for various levels of achievements. Award recipients not only gain recognition from colleges, but also win the admiration of their peers, families, and communities. I am pleased to announce our students who have been designated by the College Board. Would these scholars please join me on stage? And I think you've seen most of them this evening. Miriam Bennett, Kristen Gustafson, Elias Kaufman, Brittany Robb, Anastasia Sear, Peyton Hastings, Abraham Mendez, Mason Spencer, Benjamin Galuli, Abigail Hermes, David Pecoraro, Ian Tunis and Van Manen. These fine young students have been designated as AP scholars. This honor is granted to students who have received scores of three or higher on three or more AP exams three or higher on three or more AP exams. Remain on stage. Sarah Harrington, please come on down. Sarah has earned the AP Scholar with Honor Achievement. It is granted to students who receive an average score of at least a 3.25 on all AP exams taken in grades of three or higher on four or more of these exams. As I call your name, scholars, come on up. Miranda Coble, Alice Yanigro, Isaiah Pressman, Sesney Watkins, Shani Gellis, Sarah Lentz, Juliana Sorio, Ann Zakari, Sylvia I. Marino, Thomas Ferris, Celia Vandenbogen. These ladies and gentlemen have earned the Advanced Placement Scholar with distinction. They earned an average score of 3.5 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on five or more of these exams. Would Sesney Watkins please come forward? The National Advancement Placement Scholar Award is granted to students in the United States who receive an average score of at least a four on all AP exams taken and scores of four or higher on eight or more of these exams. Sesney has achieved these prestigious awards for 2015. Congratulations, Sesney, for your hard work and accomplishments. And to all of our scholars, let's give a hearty round of applause for their hard work and dedication. All right, please be seated. Thank you, guys. We're in the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen, but I would be remiss if I left stage without thanking one person, Miss Jacqueline Bloxett. I would like to give her a round of applause this evening. For without this night, it would not happen. Yes. If it was not for Ms. Blocks and this tonight would not happen the way that it does. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, the thanks goes to the parents first and to the students. And I love working with them, but I did age a lot this year. Okay, Wood, <laughs> would uh, Gabe Dabney please come to the stage? Is Gabe here? Oh, there he is. Betty Lummy was an English teacher in this district for over two decades. She had faith in all her students and challenged them to reach their potential. She, for many, many years, Betty was an avid boys basketball fan. Betty won an Ohio State bleacher seat, a black purse, and wearing a high tie t-shirt sat right behind the team for every game. She kept the stats for each player, freely shared her game plan, commentary on all the coaches and fans alike. She always encouraged the players, even when everyone else had given up hope. Unfortunately, Betty passed away just before she was able to see her beloved boys win the Ohio State Basketball Championship. But you can be sure that her spirit was up there until the very last shot. This scholarship, in a very small way, pays tribute to that contribution. It is given to a senior who has been a member of the basketball team for at least three years with a minimum of a 2.0. This year's recipient is Gabe Dabney. <laughs> Gabe, Gabe is an athletic scholar who has a 3.63 GPA while participating in the mentoring program as a tutor, playing on the basketball and baseball teams for the past four years, and he's a member of the National Honor Society for the past three years. He has also volunteered and worked at Open Doors Academy. Gabe is attending Ohio University this fall, majoring in sports management and communications. As the captain of the basketball team, his leadership skills have been exemplary. And I know that you're going to carry that into the next phase of your life, right? All right, well, congratulations. <laughs> Ms. Moss. Mrs. Moss is uh, joining us today. Uh oh. My husband made it through uh, Case Western Reserve University um, on scholarships and washing um, test tubes. And <laughs> I was a lousy student and um, somehow made it through graduate school and decided that I really love children. And so I want other people's children to be able to have the success that we both had. And that's why we created this fund. Okay. <laughs> Ebony Brown Bay, please come to the stage. I said Ebony, I'm sorry. Imani. As you come to the stage. Imani Brown Bay, please come to the stage. This is a scholarship that requires our seniors to be strong students as well as be strong citizens of the community. Um, one of the uh, other requirements is that they have many student activities as well as the community activities. And our young lady here was involved in so many things the first three years of being a student here at Cleveland Heights High. She has excelled academically. She has about a 3.58 GPA. Excellent. And she spent nine months in Japan. And she made friends there. She was involved in different community services there. She learned so many things about their culture. And in the fashion show this year, she modeled uh, Japanese, what was it, kimono? Kimono, yes, she did that. And that was just amazing. But she has calculations that's gonna carry her into her successful career. 
um, of an engineer. And she will be attending the University of Illinois. Okay, I do remember some things. Okay, <laughs> I want to congratulate you, and you have the honor of giving it to her with this scholarship. Um, I flew ahead. Ebony Gray, please come to the stage. The Edward D. Dibner Award was established in memory of Edward Dibner, chairperson of the counseling staff at Heights High School for many years. The recipient exemplifies the person of Ed. These are high ethical standards, compassion, and sensitivity toward others, and pride in doing a job well done, like telling Ms. Blockson to keep her death clean. <laughs> Qualities that inspire trust and loyalties in others. This year's recipient is Ebony Gray. Ebony is a bright young woman with a 3.48 GPA who's involved in the AVID program. She's secretary of the Gospel Choir. She's co-leader of the Bible Study Group and a member of MSAN. She is going to Point Park University in the fall to study media and communications with the goal of getting a job in media broadcasting. And Ebony, I know that your desk is going to look horrendous. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Ebony. <laughs> just don't like me. Ah, my speech is not in there either. Would Nicholas Cicero and Kayla Blake Banks please join me on stage. <laughs> the Cleveland Heights Women's Civic Club was organized uh, many, many years ago. And the uh, women within that club really wanted to give back uh, to the community. And so when they organized uh, the scholarship for Cleveland Heights High, they wanted it to go to those students who strive for excellence. So the students had to have at least a minimum of a 3.0. They also had to be involved in many activities that included uh, school as well as the community, which these young people have. Um, and, and I just want to say congratulations. Yeah, especially to you. <laughs> Kayla, thanks. <laughs> In recognition of your academic achievements and your goal to pursue a college education, I say congratulations. Okay. And Nicholas, Nick, as I know that you like to be called, I say congratulations to, uh, you're going to Miami University, and you're going to major in? Biology. Oh, sure. Even you couldn't remember. OK, he's going to major in biology.
The President's Education Awards Program, established by the United States Department of Education, recognizes and honors outstanding educational achievement. Students must have a 3.5 grade point average or better on a 4.0 scale. Also, students must score in the 85th percentile or higher in math and reading on standardized achievement tests. These students are our recipients of the President's Educational Awards Program. I have a letter from the White House written and signed by President Obama. Each of you has received a copy of it and it reads, please accept my congratulations on receiving the President's Education Award. It is a privilege to join your family, friends, and teachers in recognizing this impressive achievement. The creativity and energy of our young people drive our nation's progress and this accomplishment speaks to your hard work in the classroom. Bright, motivated students like you who excel in school inspire me, and I know you will use your knowledge and passion to shape the future. By staying engaged and always making an effort to help those around you, you can prepare for your own success and contribute to writing the next great chapter in the American story. Again, congratulations. If you remain focused and keep pushing yourself, there is no limit to what you can achieve. I expect, and can, I expect you to continue doing exceptional things. Signed by President Barack Obama. <laughs> Students, our district and community in the high school are very proud of you, and again, congratulations. Right now, communications uh, director here at the high school, she's gonna take a group picture of you all, so please just remain standing. And as she's doing that, uh, as Mrs. Henderson is taking your picture, I will read uh, to you a letter from the Secretary of Education. And it reads in part, actually I'm gonna read the whole letter to you. It says, I am pleased to join President Barack Obama and many others in congratulating you on earning the 2015 President, President's Education Award. I commend you for the hard work and dedication that you have helped uh, achieve this recognition. You are making a strong start in life and the possibilities before you are limitless. I encourage you to, to continue working hard to learn as much as you can and to achieve your goal. Education is a gateway for future achievement. As you share your unique talents, you will honor the efforts of those who support you, and you will help to build a better world. Please keep working hard, remain focused, stay in school, and be a lifelong learner and a role model for others. Education will change your life forever. Signed, the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. Students, again, congratulations, and could you please come back on stage at this time? At this time, we're going to ask all students who have been offered scholarships and financial awards from colleges and universities to please come to the front of the auditorium and be congratulated by us. And you see those other names in the programs. If there's any other students who have received scholarships, please come forward. These students have received awards and scholarships from various colleges and universities. They too have worked very hard during their high school years, and we want to acknowledge them with pride and admiration. Additionally, many of our students were also offered athletic scholarships 
in varying amounts. That's not included in this total that I just gave you. So again, let's all congratulate all of our students on doing such a well job. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has truly been a fantastic evening. A long evening, but a fantastic evening. I would like to thank the entire community, families, and the organizations for your generosity. Our scholarship program tonight, the scholarship program tonight generated $92,687. Students, you will receive information in the mail which will allow you to write and to thank people for their scholarships. Please make sure you take a moment to do this very small but meaningful deed. A thank you letter goes a long way. Parents, thank you for your hard work and support and everything that you have given to your son and daughter. We love you, we appreciate you, and we value you. Please join me once again in applauding all of our students. Thank you all for coming. Have a great night.